everyone. So the Detroit Pistons are encouraging Cade Cunningham to get surgery amid Victor Wimanyama rumors. So Cade Cunningham has been out late uh, with a shin fracture, a stress fracture on his shin, and he is their young rising star, right? He's the guy that they're trying to build their franchise around Detroit. He's very young. Uh, I do believe that they have a lot of potential for the future. I just think that they're a very young team. They're not very good. They're one of the tanking teams currently, and they should continue down that trajectory, right? Detroit is in no rush to try to bring Cade Cunningham back. Uh, they want him, especially with his age and just upside potential, uh, what they see him and view him as, uh, as the future of this franchise. You want him to get as much rest as possible. If he has to miss the season, he misses the season. You're not making the playoffs. You're not winning anything. You know, even if you were to miraculously go on some crazy run, make the playoffs, you're not winning an NBA championship. So let your young guy come in. Go continue to tank for Victor Wembanyama. Continue being, uh, you know, a bad team this year. Let your young guys get some experience, all of those things, and then, you know, transition into the next stage especially if you land Victor Wimbanyama or even if you don't even if you land like one of the Thompson twins or you know uh Scoot Henderson you're still primed and ready for the future uh and Detroit right now has as best odds as anybody uh as far as like you know uh the the tank race so makes a lot of sense that Detroit would want to do that but if you're the Lakers you need to call Detroit and work something out. I mean, seriously, they have plenty of veterans that they would be more than happy to move off of, especially if they really do want Cade Cunningham to, you know, sit the rest of the season out. It would make sense. Let your other young guys get a lot, a lot of burn, right? Let, you know, uh, Duran get 30 minutes a game, 40 minutes a game, whatever. I mean, you're tanking anyway. You're losing anyways. Let your young guys go and get as much playing time as possible. Stewart, guys like that, right? That's the goal. Move off of, you know, Alec Burke, Nerlens Noels, Boyan Bogdanovich. Uh, now, obviously, this deal wouldn't be able to be done till after December 15th, which is one of the things that makes me very curious as far as why Rob Palinka pushed the extension, right? Uh, originally, it was after Thanksgiving, but then we got the announcement that, you know, hey, we're going to we're gonna wait till after December 15th because guys become available uh, and that makes things so much easier. Uh, also, guys that, you know, uh, on other teams become available, such as Boyan Bogdanovich. Boyan Bogdanovich uh, would be eligible for trade after December 15th. So it would make sense that, the Lakers are kind of just waiting and standing by. And Boyan Bogdanovich, I think, would be a perfect fit for the Lakers. A guy that could get you 20 points per game. Right now, he's shooting like 50, 40, 90. He's just shooting lights out, playing great, gets you another 20-point a game score, gets you a guy that can create a little bit for himself. I mean, he's not, you know, Kyrie Irving with the basketball, but he's a guy that can go and get create space, get his own shot off, um, would be great. And the type of looks he would get next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis would be fantastic. He could play the three, he could play the four, play multiple positions. Uh, you could also maybe get a Nerlens Noel, get you another big uh, that you could start uh, or, you know, come in and, and alleviate. You could run him and Thomas Bryant just gives you another big, or you could just wave them. You know, if you wanted to, you just unload them. The beauty is that outside of Boyan Bogdanovich, everyone else gives you flexibility, right? Uh, Nerlens Noel, expiring deal. Uh, Alec Burke, you could keep, re-sign if you want, or uh, you could just let him go. Uh, but the beauty of him too is that that gives you another 3 and D style player, right? So you get two 3 and D style players. You get, you know, Nerlens Noel. You'll probably have to get other assets if you're going to do Russell Westbrook, right? Uh, or you could work something out to maybe try to keep Russell Westbrook and maybe trade Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn. Even if you just go get like a Boyan Bogdanovich, uh, maybe you could piece uh, Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, and maybe like a, a Damian Jones, give up a first round pick, get Boyan Bogdanovich, and maybe get, you know, a, a, a Sadiq Bey. That would be nice if you could get something like that. Uh, work work out a, a combination of that. Now you get a young 3 and D style player. A guy who, yes, he's having a rough start to the season for Detroit. But he is a guy that has shown like he can score in bunches. He can score in a vacuum. Uh, good size, wing depth, young. He's like 23 years old. So it gives you a, a wing piece for the future. A guy that's for the future. And a big question mark is what kind of return would Sadiq Bey uh, yield, right? Uh, now, Detroit wants a first round pick, but what they want and what they actually will settle for are two different things, right? Uh, he's very likely not going to get a first round pick uh, in exchange for him. It's just not going to happen because what teams 
are looking for a Sadiq Bay that also could trade and make sense for Detroit, right? So a young team that maybe looks at him and goes, okay, maybe a nice change of scenery for Sadiq Bay. Uh, we could get him. Maybe they have a young guy that they're not really high on and maybe you could do one of those swaps, change of scenery type trade. Um, or, you know, maybe a contender looks and sees him as like a young bench key piece that could come in, maybe provide a spark off the bench. But even then, most contending teams don't have a bunch of like, you know, young assets that are on $2 million deals that they could just swap out and and give up a first. So I don't see Sadiq Bey getting or yielding a first unless it's in like a multi-player deal which would insert the Lakers, right? Lakers could get Sadiq Bey, maybe get, you know, Boyan Bogdanovich. There gives That gives you two wing players. That gives you a 20-point-a-game score, a shooter, everything that the Lakers could really need. You probably give up, you know, maybe one first. Uh, ideally, if you could do the deal and not give up a first, maybe give up a pick swap in, like, you know, two seconds or something. Uh, but even if you did give up one first, let's say, right? Let's say you did give up one first. Well, you could do like Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, and then like I said, maybe like a Damian Jones. Uh, Maybe you can even include another piece, maybe work it out to get Alec Burke as well, uh, and then maybe get those three guys, do some kind of swap, and then give up a first. If you can keep Russell Westbrook, keep Russell Westbrook and a first, and then now you're in a position where you got three key pieces or even just two key pieces that could come in and provide some sparks, kind of reevaluate, see where you're at. Does Boyan Bogdanovich take them over the top? Does Boyan Bogdanovich make them a legit contender? Or does he bring them to the cusp, right? Like maybe he makes them that much better where it's like, okay, like, wait a minute, let's go look at Russell Westbrook trades, right? Let's go take a look and see what we could unload Russell Westbrook for. And we still have that one first. Maybe we could get another piece or two. And now now you're legit contender. Now it's like, okay, like the Lakers are for real. Especially in the Western Conference right now. Western Conference is so wide open I, I just think the Lakers have a real fair shot at winning a championship, especially the way Anthony Davis is playing. If he continues to play the way he is playing right now, I mean, you're talking defensive player of the year and MVP. Like, If they can get into the playoffs, I wouldn't be shocked if Anthony Davis wins both of them. Still got LeBron James. Yes, he, he's been a little off this year, it looks like, but he's still a guy that's giving you 20 points a game. Still a guy that, uh, at least last game, looked energized in spots. I do believe... If the Lakers were to get to the playoffs, I think you would see a different LeBron. I just, I really do. I think, you know, LeBron knows he only has so many chances left. Uh, I've even said that if the Lakers, for whatever reason, make the Western Conference Finals, I think we see like a 27-year-old LeBron James again. Because LeBron's going to look at it as like, this is what I've spent millions of dollars every year on and just worked my tail off to get in this position so that way when I'm 38 years old, I can have a run. I need to win eight games. Eight games. And I could see LeBron just turning back the clock for, you know, to go win eight games, especially if Anthony Davis playing monsters. I think Boyan Bogdanovich is a, a huge need for the Lakers because, again, a guy that could play size, that could play multiple positions, you know, three, play the four. Um, he's not a great defender, but he tries, you know, which is good. You know, uh, unlike you know, there's some players that just don't try at all. Uh, he's a better defender than Buddy Heald. Uh, so that's something. Uh, and he, in my opinion, he can create a little more than Buddy Heald. Um, Buddy Heald, look, Buddy Heald is a volume shooter. He's great. Don't get me wrong. I think Buddy Heald would help. But I think Boyan Bogdanovich offers you more uh, versatility than Buddy Heald does and just slightly better defense. Not much. You know, it's not like uh, Boyan Bogdanovich is, you know, meta world peace in his prime defense or Tony Allen or something like that, right? Nothing like that. But... He, he he puts more effort where, you know, you, you watch a buddy healed. Like he just, there's times where he just seems like he doesn't even try. He gets blown by and he's just like, all right, whatever. You know, where Boyan will at least make an attempt. Plus got some size, which is always good. All of those things. I think Boyan would be a great fit, especially if you could end up with Sadiq Bey and Alec Burke somehow. If you could work out a combination to get uh, those three guys, I think that that would be huge for the Lakers. Um, you know, you get a three and D guy, uh, you get Sadiq Bay, a young potential three and D guy, you get Boyan Bogdanovich. You just, it, it's just, it, again, it, it's, it's a nice sort of combination. And I think if you're the Lakers, you really need to be on the phones regularly with the, with the Detroit Pistons. Like, Hey, what are we doing here? What's going on? What is it going to take to get these guys? Because I think Detroit really is a team that I don't think would cost a lot. You know, they got Boyan Bogdanovich for for pennies on the dollar. 
And, you know, Sadiq Bey, I don't see yielding this, like, you know, first-round pick return that they're looking for. Um, so they're a team that is clearly tanking, especially if they if Cade Cunningham ends up do getting surgery. I just think if you're the Lakers, you're, you're doing whatever you can to, to kind of work this out, to kind of figure it out, right, and, and get a deal done and kind of capitalize on the position that, that the, uh, you know, that the, the Detroit Pistons are in, you know, because there's... There are other options, but I, I do think, I know a lot of people want the Indiana Pacers trade. I know a lot of people really look at Indiana and go, like, that's the deal we need. That's the deal we want. Um, let's make that deal happen. But I just don't think the way that Anthony Davis is playing the game of basketball at the center spot, it's a good idea to then go and trade him, you know, and, and try to do what? You know, try to try to move him away from the basket you know, and like I've seen people that are like, oh, well, Miles Turner, like he could, you know, he stretches the floor and stuff. Well, isn't that kind of redundant to why you need both bigs? Wouldn't you rather have like a three and D guy that could do the same thing, but also defend the other, you know, the other team's perimeter players rather than, you know, like teams. Yeah, we'd be great at shot blocking and we'd be great in the paint, but our problem isn't the paint right now. Our front problem is interior and three point shooting, just basically three and D guys in general, just shooting in general. And I think Boyan Bogdanovich would open up so much because he's also very good in the mid range, right? He's really good at, at just basically shooting anywhere on the court. So you get that. He's a guy that has experience. Another thing about Buddy Hield that people don't take into account, Buddy Hield's never been in the playoffs. At least Boyan Bogdanovich has been in the playoffs and he has that experience. So you know you can count on him uh, to an extent. And then you know, Sadiq Bey would be more of like a, you know, now and in the future, like whatever production he gives you is just added production. But ideally, you know, if he it's if he's great this year, then great. But ideally, it's like, OK, he's a piece for our future. He's a young asset that we could use to kind of build around. You got him. You got Christy. Uh, you figure out a way to keep Austin Reeves and and, uh, you know, maybe a winning Gabriel guy, you know, your, your young pieces, right? Walker. Although I'm a little worried that Walker's playing himself into like a, a big contract, like an overpaid contract, but whatever, whatever you got to do, get some young guys, keep some cores, start building for the future, uh, get some three and D guys. I think Detroit is is a real destination to to look at, and I think the 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 idea of them moving the the trade time to after December fifteenth, I think it may have something to do with Detroit, even if they just go get like I said, Boyan Bogdanovich and Sadiq Bay. Right, Beverly Nunn for Bogdanovich, Sadiq Bay. Look, Sadiq Bay cannot be worse than Patrick Beverly has been because Patrick Beverly has been the worst offensive player in the league this year. So anything is better than what he's providing, and he'd be more willing to come off the bench. I just think it's it would be a huge win for the Lakers. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? How do you feel? Good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between? Let me know down in the comment section below.